Hello and welcome back to my channel guys. Uh, today's gonna be a quick video. I'm gonna show how I set up Blender when I do my 10 minute challenges of uh, building stuff. So I've got uh, Blender 2.82 loaded here and it's basically just the default scene. Click and select to delete the camera and I select to delete this uh, light. Don't delete the default cube. We're gonna make that a hero every time. So pretty much every object that I create, I start from this cube. So let's keep that one in. I also create the material. So if you go to the shading tab and click on the cube, and that'll bring up uh, the default material here. Check out the description for a link to this palette that I'm using now. I've created uh, a new one called Infensia Palette 01, and it's a PNG file. And it's only eight by eight pixels, so it's really, really small. But I, you drag that one from uh, your explorer into the material editor. And then what you do is just drag this color here onto base color. As you can see, it's really blurry here, and that's because I've shrunk down, so it's only eight by eight pixels. And the reason for that is that in a game engine, it's really good to have, uh, it's not gonna occupy hardly any texture space at all. So uh, keep it small like that, but it does mean that we have to change this from linear to closest, so it doesn't interpolate between the pixels. It should look crisp and clean like this. I do most of my modeling in the UV edit screen because I wanna have quick access to colorizing the mesh while I work on it. And as you can see, I have to zoom in a lot on this left side here because the texture is so small that uh, you'll probably wonder where it is, but if you zoom in, it's, as you can see, eight by eight pixels only. And then we can resize this a little bit, press the middle mouse button and zoom out a little bit again. You can use this drop down here and I like to enable texture here so I can see the texture. And in the same drop down up here, I usually enable cavity and I change uh, type to both here for world and screen. And then I bring these sliders up. Lately, I've also used a few add-ons. So uh, if you go to edit and preferences, then uh, you can type in here auto and see auto mirror, which is really useful. So that's one that I recommend that you enable. And the second one here is if you type in bool in the search field and uh, enable this one called bool tool. That's also really useful when you need to do some subtractions, especially from a mesh. Also, if you want to have screencast keys enabled, that doesn't come. I've said that it comes with Blender, but it doesn't. So ignore what I said before in my earlier videos. What you need to do is go to this URL here. I'll uh, put a link in the description below as well. You download this zip file here and then you click on install here. You navigate to it and you click install add-on. Once you've done that, you need to go to the add-on here and either you type it in the search field or you can scroll all the way down here and enable screencast keys here. It's a bit uh, tricky because uh, it doesn't enable itself by default. So you need to expand this little thing here on the side. You can also press N to access that panel. Then you see a new one here called screencast keys and you have to disable it and enable it again for some reason. And uh, you can change the font size, for example, and things like that. So and now you'll have the history of whatever actions that you do. It doesn't do every command I've seen. So if I press tab into edit mode, for example, often I do A to select everything that shows. And then I press S scale, which is good. But now when I press X, it doesn't show that I lock it on the X axis. So keep in mind that some of the keys won't be visible, but most of them are. So that's pretty good anyway. The other two add-ons that I added were uh, the bool tool and the auto mirror. So if you, uh, there's another tab here called edit. So if you click on that one, uh, you can see both bool tool and auto mirror here. Uh, if you don't see the bool tool, it might be because you're in edit mode here. So if I go into tab, you see that that one disappeared because that one is only available on an object level. And uh, I'll demonstrate those real quickly. If I've got this object, I'll press shift D to duplicate it. And with this bool tool now, if I expand it, you can either click, if I have this one selected, I'll shift click this one to multiple select. And then if I click difference here, for example, you see that it'll subtract that one and create a new object. There is also a hotkey for that one. And uh, instead of having this even expanded at all, you can keep it like this or even be on a different tab. And if I press control shift minus on the numpad now, that's the same thing as well. So that was the bool tool. The other one is the auto mirror. If I go into the modifier tab here and I've got an object selected and you click on expand this one and just click auto mirror with the default settings, uh, it does it on the X axis and basically it just adds the modifier and enables clipping here. There's one more setting that I recommend that you enable as well, and that's up here to the right. You have uh, auto merge vertices, which is really handy. If you have vertices that are moved into the same location, it'll automatically merge those vertices instead of you having to, to weld them together. And I can demonstrate that by going up here and changing the snap to to vertex. And if I select this vertex, I press G to move it, and then I hold the control key to snap it onto a different vertex. Now you'll see that 
there's only one vertex left there, it, it merges them. Otherwise, if you don't have this enabled, let's redo that one without it. If I move this one out, G, hold the control key and snap it there. Basically, you have still two vertices here. So auto merge is really good. The scene is actually finished now, so you could uh, just save this one as your start scene and uh, it should have all the stuff enabled that we need. I just want to mention as well, if you're wondering what this funky setup is with the box here, it's because if you have seen my videos, what I can do is if I go into face select here, I click on a face. What I do is usually I click A to select on the left side here on the UV and I press S to scale it down and then I press zero. It doesn't show what I, that I typed a zero here, but I did after I pressed the S, I, I clicked zero to make it basically non-existent nearly. And then I pr press G on the left side and now I can move it whatever I want to select a color for that face. You can also do it by selecting multiple faces like this. I click A to select all the faces and then on the left side, A, scale, and then I press zero on the keyboard, and then I press G and I can move it to whatever color I want. So this is how I usually colorize my low poly meshes. The cool thing about this is that you don't really need a big texture, as I mentioned in the beginning, and you get really sharp edges, no matter how much you zoom into your object, you'll always have a really sharp edge. If I do a diagonal cut here, for example, select this face and colorize that one red, you can basically zoom in forever onto, onto this and you won't get any pixelation. So it's actually a really nice way to colorize meshes. So low poly will look really crisp this way. The add-ons and the auto merge vertices setting was recommended by you guys. So thanks a lot for that. I've uh, found them really useful. So I appreciate it. That's it for this video. Take care and I'll see you soon again. Bye for now.